All right, hi. So please introduce yourself. Sure, my name is Jeff, I'm from Qualcomm and we're here at Mobile World Congress. And really we're at Qualcomm's booth and we're showcasing a number of areas. You may have known Qualcomm from our days of being a communications company. Uh, and we still are very much a communications company. We're talking here about our Snapdragon processors that go into many consumer devices. So we're gonna go ahead and walk over to our Snapdragon area that really talks about um, the power of Snapdragon and as well as 5G communications, millimeter wave communications that allow us to get, we're talking about gigabit or, or fiber-like speeds um, from our millimeter wave chipsets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here and we're gonna look at some communications on where did my colleague, Laramie, Laramie. So if you give me a second, let me bring my colleague over. So my colleague here is gonna talk a little bit about our commercial network that we're actually on here at Mobile Congress in millimeter wave. And he's going to talk about some of the throughputs and the, and the data paths that we got going on. Right. So right here, we have a 5G millimeter wave uh, with our partners from Movistar. And uh, we can see we have three devices connected at the same time. Right here, we have this computer connected to FIG with this uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. We're pushing here uh, more than 1.3 gigabits per second on this device. Okay. And at the same time, that computer over there, here, this is a Qualcomm-powered computer. We're also pushing more than a gigabit per second on this computer. And then this guy here, let's test here what we get. Getting 1 1.6, 1 1.7 gigabits per second. And right? this is real, it's here at the show. This is happening right now. This well, is just for this demo only. No, 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 this is at the show. So if you are a movie star customer and you have a millimeter wave phone, you are connected to this network. And also, if you're a Verizon network, they have a, uh, a roaming agreement, you are also using millimeter wave, right? This so is, this is available for- So it's Vodafone's SIM card that I got? Well, I don't know about the deal they have with, with Vodafone, but specifically, this is a movie star uh, network. But it is commercially available for, you know, if, you, if you're here and you have them- Because I've been trying to live stream the last uh, couple days, and sometimes um, it's hard for so many people. Like, uh, it's a huge show. Everybody has mobile phones in their pockets. There's interference, right? Yes, there's a lot is of- Is 5G better for this stuff? Right, so millimeter wave is actually a, a spectrum that is very empty. So if you try to use Wi-Fi right now, it's extremely, extremely crowded here. Um, that's the stuff, one of the big advantages of having a 5G millimeter wave, that this spectrum allows you enormous bandwidth. And the, uh, right now it's very empty. So this is, this is the sort of throughput so, but you can have. But the trick is to not, to not use this as a Wi-Fi hotspot. You need the ethernet directly, then you get the speed. Right, the Wi-Fi is crowded. The Wi-Fi yeah. is crowded, yeah. So that was my mistake. I was yes. doing a Wi-Fi hotspot yesterday. Yeah, no, Wi-Fi is incredibly crowded right here. In, yeah. So yeah, so the, you, you want to be on the 5G spectrum. You want to be streaming straight via, the, the, via 5G. Nice. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So there's uh, so many phones with 5G now. There is. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, all these phones, they're 5G powered. All these phones here. This first row here is uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So these are our latest devices. Those devices on the other side are Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So this is a device from previous years, but they're also millimeter wave enabled. What's the better with Gen 2? Well, the Gen 2, we have, I mean, we can go through the list, but it's, uh, it's we have better graphics, better CPU performance. We have a newer modem. Uh, it's, it's, it's a the year refresh that we make it better every year. Right? How's the modem better? Well, we were able to uh, aggregate more carriers, use more spectrum, uh, more power efficient. We're also en enabling uh, uh, artificial intelligence within our modem as well. So now when we start talking about wireless communications, we can now start to talk about how we in, uh, do uh, beam forming within our own antennas or, or using artificial intelligence to augment our modem for either reducing power or, 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 or making uh, giving more power for better coverage, okay? So if we want to kind of move along here, we can show you some other areas that we're working on. There's another area that we wanted to look at in terms of um, our Snapdragon Compute Platform. When we saw the Snapdragon Compute Platform, it really is a chipset for uh, PCs. Excuse me. So in this case, this is a uh, Microsoft Surface Pro 9, has integrated 5G, but the important thing about this one is, 
is it's got artificial intelligence built in into the audio system. Now we've all been on uh, conference calls where where um, someone is a typing in the background, or someone's dog is barking, or there's a your your gardener is working with a with a leaf blower. This technology has those, has AI models that that restrict all those audio uh, all that noise and only sends the prominent voiceover. So we're going to give you a demonstration. My speaker is on. That's connected to the back. And I'm going to go ahead and start a recording, right? Chris, this bit right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. I'm going to start clapping my butt, clapping my hands, and I can use the keyboard here. Or is there no keyboard uh, to make the keyboard noise? But let's just go ahead and click this. I'm. Uh, is it recording? No. Uh, let's see. Start recording. I'm recording right now. My name is Jeff, and I'm clapping. We also hear a lot of background noise. I'm clapping. We're knocking, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on. Uh, I'm going to turn on the noise cancellation. Now I'm going to do that same test. We're talking, we got a lot of background noise. I'm clapping, I'm knocking, or on my keyboard, and I'm going to stop this now. And let's go ahead and play this back. Okay? Now you're going to have to listen up here. This is recording. I'm recording right now. My name is Jeff. And I'm clapping. We also hear a lot of background noise. I'm clapping, we're knocking. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on. Uh, I'm going to turn on the noise cancellation. Now I'm going to do that same test. We're talking, we got a lot of background noise. I'm clapping, I'm knocking, or on my keyboard, and I'm going to stop this now. So you can let's see, go ahead and play the just in the noise back, just in the, in the background noise, there was a significant reduction in that noise. And then all the other noise. We, we, and this is done, again, within air models. We can actually uh, block a number of different noises, whether it be a dog barking or uh, someone clapping keyboards. It's really about the model that is put within the uh, within this platform here to omit those certain uh, uh, noises. Okay. And this is in all the latest Windows and ARM. In this case, uh, this technology was uh, was uh, using Qualcomm's. Uh, Hexagon DSP processing, but specifically for Microsoft's uh, Surface Pro right now. Okay. All right. And then this is awesome ThinkPad. I see a ThinkPad with a Qualcomm chipset. Uh, That's cool. Yep. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad X13s. These are just another samples. This is using our uh, HCX Gen 3 platform chipset, specifically designed for our laptops and compute platforms. Okay. Now, if we kind of come back over here. This is another area where Qualcomm is working on. I mentioned it. We're mainly working in communications, but we're really broadening our horizon. These are all XR devices. When we talk about XR, we're talking about virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. These headsets here are a combination of those. These can be virtual reality is where you put the device uh, over your head and you're completely uh, engulfed in a new surrounding. There's other ones here that are mixed reality where I can see through the lenses, uh, as well as um, have virtual reality. And then the far uh, left-hand side, you start to see augmented reality glasses, where we're now putting glasses, they look like more like uh, eyeglasses or sunglasses. And we now talk about having, um, kind of being able to anchor objects or being able to show virtual uh, representations of objects within our real world. Now how we do that is, these are Qualcomm reference designs, what we do is, We've reduced the size of what you see here because what we, we do is we leverage the cell phone technology and we create a, um, a high-speed wireless link between my cell phone and the glass and we do some of the processing on my phone and some of the processing on the glass to be able to get that longer life of battery and the better uh, performance, okay? Uh, in addition to that, you so can are see... So uh, are these yeah. on the market? No, these are... Any of these? These are uh, mostly reference designs that are early early prototypes uh, that we work with. Some of our, our partners uh, that we work with in terms of Gore-Tec using our latest AR, AR chipsets. Uh, Lenovo Think, Think Reality is using some of our chipsets. These are <clears throat> these are just mostly um, early prototypes of how we can actually um, build our application processes, build the use cases to be able to show the value of how we can use this technology. Okay? Nice. So some of these are available publicly, but more from a development. And on the other side? On the other side, on the other side we're really starting yeah. Again, you know, sh showing the concept that Qualcomm is really doing, uh, working in a lot of different areas. We're talking about earbuds, we're talking about wearables, we talk about Snapdragon sound in a sense that we can now 
as an artist uh, produces video, they do it from a, uh, and they, re they record that video, they do it uh, in the most pristine area. So typically when it gets down to our Bluetooth headsets, there's a lot of loss, lossy uh, signals there, and we lose a lot of the, the, the um, um, uh, the value or the accuracy of the music itself. What we do with Snapdragon Sound is we create a lossless environment, so you hear exactly what was uh, produced within the studio when the, when the artist created the, the, the content. Okay? And uh, smartwatches? Smartwatches, these have our, these are our, our wearable platforms, all have Snapdragon processors in them. And they all these support the Google Wear. <laughs> uh, I think most of them do, they're, they're all on our Snapdragon Wear uh, 4100 platform. Or um, I think I'm just trying to think here which ones are. That's the only one that's Google Wear. Okay, Google Wear right there. That's the only one. Mont Blanc. Right. So that's cool. Okay. Uh, the coolest smartwatch is. Yeah. Lots so. Of other stuff I yeah, I mean we we also have our CPE equipment in terms of talking about millimeter wave within. Uh, within devices here, so we now talk about you can put this, as opposed to building a infrastructure with uh, base stations, you can now use this equipment to be able to communicate, and phones would be able to communicate directly to these devices as more like cell phone hotspots, if you will, for, for lack of a better term. Um, and then on, on this side, obviously, we're talking about leveraging you know, the power of our Wi-Fi chipsets for Wi-Fi 7 using uh, technologies like HBS okay. and, and even uh, aggregation of channels across different bands to get the most throughput that we can. Okay? So you do, uh, uh, you do power the best Wi-Fi in the world, we, and then when we, you go over, over here, it's kind of like mini base stations. Yep. Uh, it's 5G expansion. 5G extensions will we'll, we'll actually uh, have the ability for cell phones to really park or camp on our uh, um, 5G networks to be able to help more in a, in a uh, kind of a small cell environment, so to speak, okay? Um, so if we kind of walk this way, we'll get into a little bit more of the IoT-based use cases. That was really more of our Snapdragon, and by the way, uh, yeah, go up this way. So it's getting kind of crowded in here with, on our IoT side, you can see there's a lot of activity within our, activ within our IoT space. So I'd like to, uh, are you, are you uh, filming here? Okay. Can you guys do a demo over here at all? Yes. Yeah. Come on up. So I'm gonna turn you guys over to my colleague Earl, and he's gonna talk to you a little bit about our Qualcomm Aware platform. It is an IoT-based solution, and I'll turn it over to Earl. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Earl Martin with Qualcomm. So what we're showing you here is an uh, inclinometer that's part of the Qualcomm Aware platform. The idea is to be used with utility poles out in remote areas. Uh, as you know, it takes a lot of resources, time, and money to send crews out in those areas to report and maintenance on the poles that are out there. So now we have an inclinometer that allows you uh, the ability to track online the condition of your pole. So as you see here on screen, we have our pole in which we set a tilt uh, breach mark at nine degrees, right? Physically, this pole is at 15, that if it's at past that breach, we'll get indications over time that that pole is tilting, so that gives us the ability to go out and, and monitor. The other thing that we're able to do is that if that pole gets impacted, and what you'll see in the next two minutes, it'll register a hard red line, which will indicate impact this is the one before that. So in the next two minutes, you'll see that breach, as well as the um, impact line that will be indicating that somebody, or either somebody or debris from a natural disaster or whatever has hit that pole. But the good thing is, is that you not only get the fact of showing that information, but you can also find the location. As you can see here, we're in the Fira uh, here in Barcelona. And it's actually tracking the location of with pole is being utilized uh, for this demo. So as you can see, at 446, when I hit the pole, it registers that hard line that someone hit it, and a red dot to show that it exceeds the nine degrees uh, that the pole is being tilted. So now I can deploy a team out there to investigate, and now they can come back and reset the pole back to zero. In regards to the inclinometer that you see here on the, on the pole itself, it is, it is solar powered, 
So basically, as long as it has sunlight to recharge, it'll last a uh, long Lever. lifetime. Uh, if it does not have any sunlight for 60 days, or uh, 60 days, it'll last for 60 days until sunlight hits again to recharge. But as long as it keeps recharging, it will continually be used. And what's the technology for sending this message? So the device uses a combination of GPS, Wi-Fi, and cellular. So when it sends the data out, primarily it's using cellular. Wi-Fi for triangulation and APs. If not, it'll use cellular and GPS as it just, uh, location. It uses a minimum cellular. It's like once in a while it sends a packet. Or something. It's all based on what the when the device is being used, based on the company, how frequent they want that update to happen. It's going to be two minutes. It could be once a day, once a month. It's all up to the the end user. Is this stuff in the world? Uh, right now, we just announced it here at the show this week, just as of yesterday. Uh, but we are working with manufacturers to produce the finished products. Uh, and also, we've allowed the blueprints to be available to integrators around the world. Nice. This could go on bridges and all kinds of things. Wherever, wherever the use case is, we can work with them to build uh, either an inclinometer or even a tracking device of their design. Uh, but a lot of these features are leveraging Qualcomm technologies and they both connectivity as well as uh, track capabilities. All right. Thanks all right. A lot. Thank you. Thanks. Just uh, realizing the, the promise of, uh, of IoT. Yeah. Right? Uh, what other stuff do you want to show here? Okay, well, we can yeah. show some uh, some robotics platforms. So yes. if I can come on over here. Um, so here we have a, a we call a, our RB5, which is a, a IoT robotics platform. It's really a reference design uh, that we use. In this case, we're, we're talking about the, connect, the Connected Intelligent Gateway application. And I'll turn it over to my colleague here, and he's going to talk a little bit about how we can leverage this device to really make other devices kind of smart using artificial intelligence. Please. Hi. So here we are trying to uh, uh, demo uh, intelligent connect, connected yeah. intelligent gateway, where uh, you know the idea is that in an industrial setup where you have multiple uh, devices, sensors spread out to your facility, uh, you want to, uh, but those don't have any intelligence. You want to aggregate all those data and uh, give a consolidated picture of what's happening in the facility. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a graphical interface way to the people like managers or admins so that they can have a holistic view of what's happening in the, on, the, on their facility. So that's what the use case that we are trying to uh, see. We are what's, what's this little uh, thing here? So this is the intelligence part, which provides the connectivity means, wired, wireless, both types of con connectivity means, and it also has an ability to connect to a private 5G or 4G cellular network. So, no, if you is have it dragon board, yes, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the cellular connectivity is provided by uh, XZX 60, uh, XZX 55 uh, based uh, chipset, and the actual compute and intelligence is coming from QRB. Uh, we have a chipset uh, called QRB 5165, which ha which is a very powerful, uh, you know, uh, SOC which has got octa core up to 2.8 gigahertz support, BSP, uh, GPU support, hardware accelerator for both, you know, computer vision, uh, uh, computer vision, uh, AI accelerators. So all those is inside, and uh, we we are. This is a development kit. We we can we are. What we are trying to show is you can use this reference development kit to solve this kind of real uh, industrial uh, use cases. Uh, uh, with, a, with, a, with an existing uh, uh, reference platform. You don't have to worry about the platform bring up. Everything is there, and uh, you, you can just focus on the application development part. Nice. What is this box? So this, this is a, a kind of what you get as a package, uh, the RB5 reference platform. So RB5, it was RB1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, the fifth? From third, we went to five, and we also have six. Is it because you don't like the number four? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so yeah. five, oh, you have six or something. What does six, the six do? Six is more or less same as RP5, but it has got more AI uh, processing power. Uh, so you, if you have, you want to do on the edge compute, uh, it, it is able to provide like around 200 tops of, uh, you know, a processing power uh, within the platform. This one, RP5 has around five tops, 
but if you have a uh, uh, new day if you need a higher uh, you know processing need then you can move to rb6 platform all right so uh, cool. one more spot if it's okay um, yeah. thank you sir appreciate it so you come on this way i want to really talk a little bit about uh or show you uh, some our x75 our latest chipset um i'm going to bring you over here Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yes. All right. Hi. Hi, how are Hi. you? So what are you showing here? So we are showing here the um, X75. So this is the X75 is the latest modern RF system from Qualcomm. So we have just launched this about three weeks ago. So this is our sixth generation of modern RF for 5G that Qualcomm is um, bringing to the market now. So um, we have a significant change here in comparison to the previous versions as we have a new architecture for the transceivers. So we are integrating sub-6 and millimeter wave in a single transceiver as you can see here. So instead of having more than one or several, you are integrating these in a single one, having impacts especially for instance in the power consumption. So we are reducing the power consumption. Another aspect is the 5G AI processor. So we have introduced the first generation of one AI processor last year and we are bringing the second generation right now. So which has uh, impacts on the performance, especially uh, on performance of, of radio conditions. So for millimeter wave, we are enhancing the link robustness and bringing more precision, for instance, for GNSS navigation, so for uh, GPS applications. And on the top of that, we also have the enhancements on the spectrum side. So we are enhancing downlink and especially uplink capabilities, adding more carriers and adding, for instance, um, FDD MIMO, so which is introduced for the very first time from uh, from Qualcomm side. So it's a huge, it's a splash, it's a huge uh, package that we are bringing to the market. So supporting sub-6, 5G millimeter wave, and satellite, Snapdragon satellite when it's ready for the market. Is this complete and full 5G potential? Correct, yes. Everything that's possible in 5G is Correct. in there. We are supporting all commercial bands for sub-6 and 5G millimeter wave, which are in the market right now. And uh, that's just going to allow for better modems? It's going to allow better modems. It's going to allow better and more flexible utilizations. So we are hoping that there will be adoptions also from the fixed wireless access side because we have a much more, I would say, um, efficient millimeter wave connection utilizing our silicon. So for millimeter for fixed wireless access, which is getting more and more traction for 5G, we believe it's very important to take this technology in adoption. And, and uh, on, on, on the top of that, we also um, hope to have adoptions also from the PC side because you see more and more 5G penetration in the networks and the PCs can be, you know, connected via 5G as well. PCs and, 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 uh, and uh, also tablets. Okay. I got this amazing little thing in Switzerland where because I live in a village and it's not very fast, they give me a little device to kind of like boost my internet and it's 5G. Correct. So you can combine 5G together with a, like a copper internet and then Correct. you get Yeah, and this is, you're speaking about fixed wireless access essentially. So your example in, in Switzerland is a very good one because we are just, you know, with the 5G as we have more spectrum available, right? Especially for fixed wireless access, which is using millimeter wave. So we have a much, much higher spectrum bunch. So if you compare to, for instance, having a, a highway, right? So with several lanes, instead of having one or two lanes, you have like five or six lanes that you can allocate and then you can transfer more data utilizing the uh, the pipe or the RF pipe that you have available. So I was thinking when I get this extension and it's uh, 8 p.m., maybe I won't get that much bandwidth, but actually 5G it's just allowing more and more bandwidth for everybody at the same time? And it depends. Uh, if you speak from that viewpoint, it, it will depend also on the operator side. So, so, I mean, we are speaking now from the device side, right? So from the device side, we do have the capability to offer that. But in this case, you, you spoke about the time. So that, that could, you know, also rely on the operator side. If the operator is, you know, ready to offer you a package that you have unlimited connection uh, at every time. And all this technology you show here, does it come to the smartphones? 
this is coming also into the smartphones. So it's important to say that we are shipping now. X75 is ready for shipping at this moment. And we are expecting commercial devices more to the end of the year, depending, of course, on the OEMs. But when it's a smartphone, it puts the modem together with the SOC. It's kind of like a different thing, right? This is just for the 5G. Es essentially, yes. Essentially, yes, for the 5G. But we are speaking here about the system. It's not only the SOC. So we have also the RF part included. Because we're speaking about the 5G mode and RF system. It's not only the X75, which is new, right? But we also have the RF part, including the uh, millimeter wave powder and the RF front end. Does every country adopt all this stuff? Like the sub 6 gigahertz, the millimeter wave? Some countries have and not others yet Correct. and stuff? It, it would depend, of course, on the, um, on the country uh, regulations, right? So that uh, I, don't, I don't comment. But we do offer the, I would say, the um, flexibility for the OEM to offer this. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you very much. much indeed, yeah. All right. Okay, I think uh, we covered quite a bit. Uh, you can see that Qualcomm is in a number of other areas. Just, you know, outside of the modem, we really kind of looked at the IoT stuff. We looked at a lot of the Snapdragon compute devices. We did some 5G millimeter wave uh, data tests. We looked at some XR devices. We looked at wearables. We looked at uh, hearables in terms of air, air devices. We did a, a, a echo cancellation or noise cancellation uh, demonstration. So you can see how Qualcomm is really exploring a lot of different areas and, and creating technology and disrupting markets. It's an amazing job you have, right? To work in a company where it does so much technology for the, for the planet, for the humans. Oh yeah, I and mean. And bringing so many new things all the time. Yeah, and I tell you what, uh, one, of, one of the best things about Qualcomm is, is Qualcomm is really mostly an engineering company. We solve complex problems and we make it easier for our customers to deploy really creative use cases. Um, and that's, that's the beauty that you know, we're all here to solve problems and, and, uh, and really disrupt market so everybody can live really a much better life and have conveniences and technology and in communication in, in almost every bit of our lives. I mean, if you look at your house today, almost a lot of these devices have Wi-Fi. I looked at the other day and I had you know, like 30 or 40 devices on my Wi-Fi hotspot. That's because my refrigerator, my washing machine and my dryer and all my kids have all their devices. You can see how this is gonna grow and you can see how we're gonna need all this extra spectrum just to be able to, you know, work within our normal life. And soon it's three nanometers, then it'll be uh, one, and yeah, when it's below it's, one, yeah, it's I mean, uh, the efficiencies, something, right? The efficiencies continue to, to uh, come up, and, you know, the, 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 more, the smaller these devices, the more uh, the resistors that we can fit in them, the, the lower power uh, that we get. So there's just so much, uh, so much efficiency. There's a lot of challenges that go along with it, but, uh, you know, just saving of power and heat goes a long way in, in, in developing these products. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have my card? Yeah. Yeah, the video is right here. Okay. And it went out live. Oh, it did it? Yeah. Nice. Uh, with this Qualcomm, uh, Qualcomm uh, 660 powered device. Oh, it's a 660. Uh, yeah. Is it SOC or is it? It has four HDMI inputs. Oh, nice. And we're like switching. Box? Yeah, Yolo really? Box it's called. Yeah. Using Qualcomm. Oh, nice. But this one only has a 4G inside, and yesterday I was trying to use a, a 5G Wi Fi router, uh, Wi Fi, wi -fi hotspot. A hotspot, but I could also connect it on the Ethernet. Uh, and I did that once where I was using. A, well, let me show you I was what you're up against only there, right? two different things together. Let me show you what you're up against on Wi Fi. So. <laughs> This is just a Wi-Fi scanner app, right? So when you try to communicate, right, there's so many, there's, there's a bazillion access points in this area, right? So when you're trying to, to communicate, you're competing against every other access and everybody on all those access points. So there's so much interference. So that's why, you know, it's very challenging when you're at a show like this to be able to get any, you know, you know reliable communication. Um, now, we just showed you some millimeter wave stuff, right? Where the millimeter wave stuff was going in. And it doesn't no. interfere with the millimeter wave. No, this is, these are all on different spectrum. Yeah, it. Spectrum, I think the millimeter wave stuff is at 28 gigahertz. This is all at, you know, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. This is the 2.4 band. Uh, but the other one that I just showed you, the 2.4 band is, is pretty, still pretty crowded, right? 
Um, the six gigahertz band, which is really Wi-Fi seven, uh, which is which is really not. I don't think that the, we're allowed to broadcast in um, in Spain in the six gigahertz. But you can see it's empty, right? So in the United States, we can actually broadcast in, in uh, the six gigahertz space over Wi-Fi. So this band is very, it's open and will be open to be able to create new use cases and new bandwidths, more more bandwidth for new applications. Okay? That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. I added this at the end of the video. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thanks for your time. Uh, so